Tonight, good news for Alibaba ahead of its IPO. Twitter offers analytics for everyone. And will Apple reveal a wearable in less than two weeks? The answer may surprise everybody. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 160 for Wednesday, August 27th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like cinnamon swirl kettle kernels. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to the tech feed. The Alibaba Group is less than a month away from its initial public offering, and things are looking really good. The Chinese e-commerce giant has announced it almost tripled its profit in the quarter ending June 30th to $2 billion, which is an 80% profit margin with $2.5 billion in revenue. Alibaba's stock sale is expected to be one of, if not the biggest ever, raising upwards of $20 billion. Sources tell the New York Times that the company is expected to unveil the expected range price of its IPO as soon as next Tuesday and possibly begin trading the week of September 15th. Interesting note, nearly a third of the value of goods sold on Alibaba's marketplaces now comes from mobile. That's compared with just 12% a year ago. Mobile monthly active users rose 15% over the previous quarter to 188 million. Or the too long didn't read version, mobile is very hot. Time Warner cable customers, all 11.4 million of them in the United States tend to be a pretty unhappy bunch. Do you have any friends in New York City? And this morning was no exception. A service called Down Detector tracked a huge outage for the cable company earlier today, affecting people in California and the Time Warner customers in the Northeast, including New York City. By mid-morning, Time Warner Cable tweeted that services should be restored for all customers and has since explained that there was an issue with its internet backbone and has apologized for the interruption. As we mentioned in yesterday's show, Time Warner Cable is in the middle of an effort to merge with Comcast in a deal valued at $45.2 billion. An outage probably won't affect that too much, but in general, not a great day to work in Time Warner customer service. Although the majority of Facebook users worldwide are outside the U.S., the U.S. still accounts for almost half of all of Facebook's ad revenues. Company wants to do something about that. Facebook now says it has 399 million users who only access the social network on mobile devices. It doesn't break out regional proportions behind that number. However, to help boost the ratio in emerging markets where many users are primarily on mobile devices, Facebook is turning on something called bandwidth targeting, which lets advertisers send ads based on the quality of a user's network connection. For example, is it 2G, 3G, 4G, something faster? Bandwidth targeting could also be used in more established markets like the U.S. to serve rich media ads to people on faster connections, although the company says it's mostly aimed at more developing regions. Okay, do you pay for a pro Dropbox account? I don't. Many Dropbox users don't. They're basic users, as they're called. But the company has updated its pricing and features to its pro offering in an effort to convert some of those basic users into paying users. Dropbox Pro now offers 10 times the storage that users previously got. That's one terabyte for $10 a month, which matches pricing for Google Drive, something that was always curious that Dropbox wasn't already doing, which lowered its prices for a terabyte of storage earlier this year. Google Drive did, however. Dropbox's pricing now also undercuts cloud storage plans from both Box and Microsoft OneDrive. Although with OneDrive, you get a productivity suite as well. Some new pro tools include letting users add passwords for shared links, setting expiration dates that would take shared files down after a certain amount of time. Pro users can also now remotely wipe files from Dropbox folders if their device happens to get lost or stolen. The company now has more than 300 million users signed up and that's up from 200 million users just nine months ago. Oh, but watch out Dropbox because Amazon Web Services, that's the public cloud division of Amazon.com, has released its file sharing service Zocalo, which it first announced last month. Amazon is offering 200 gigabytes per user for as many as 50 users in a 30-day free trial, after which 
the service will cost $5 per user per month for that same amount of storage. And then prices go up based on a company's storage needs. Dropbox is an Amazon cloud customer and partly depends on Amazon's cloud infrastructure. So it's interesting to watch Amazon's strategy unfold here. Remember last month when Twitter launched a new analytics dashboard? No? Okay, I'll remind you. It allows you to gauge the performance of all the tweets that you sent. You send a tweet, how many people saw that tweet? How many of your followers actually clicked that link that you shared? That sort of thing. At first, it was only open to advertisers and verified users, which is why a lot of people didn't use it. But today, it is now open to anyone with a Twitter account. To get started, you can visit analytics.twitter.com. But take it from me, these engagement numbers can sometimes be a little demoralizing. Coming up, a new TV show featuring 20-somethings who unplug from technology. What? How is that possible? And up next, I'll talk with Eric Limer from Gizmodo about Apple's plans to announce a wearable in September. Interesting stuff. But first, if you would like to snack while you're watching the show, I encourage it. Kettle corn is one of the things I like most. Why not snack guilt-free, though? Try NatureBox. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial. I said kettle corn because I was eating NatureBox coffee flavored kettle corn earlier today. It's so good. NatureBox sends great tasting snacks right to your door or your office or whatever, wherever you would like with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. You just click on the continue button at naturebox.com and choose between your subscription options. And then you place your order. As a member, you select which snacks you want in every monthly box. Dietary needs are all taken care of, savory, sweet, or spicy, depending on what you like. With Nature Box, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Sriracha roasted cashews, those are good. Chili munch mix, over 100 healthy snacks to choose from. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining me now is Eric Limer, Associate Editor over at Gizmodo. Hello, Eric. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being back on the show. All right. So we got a pretty big story today. Recode posted a story earlier, said Apple's planning to announce a wearable device in two weeks at that September 9th event, which is widely thought of to be the iPhone event. You actually wrote a, an article today about this topic, kind of summing up the whole thing called I Watch Rumor Roundup, Everything We Think We Know. So what do we know? Do we know anything really? We know a little bit, but it's actually, it's actually impressive and kind of exciting how little we do know, especially about the, the actual design. So, uh, I mean, the things that we know are, are largely from sort of publicly available information like uh, some of Apple's hires and the fact that uh, Apple officials were meeting with the FDA a while ago. Um, and so like from that, from the fashion hires, we know that there's going to be a, a strong, you know, fashion focus. So hopefully it'll look nice and, uh, and a health focus. So it should have a lot of, you know, unique health features. But as for specifically what it'll look like, it, it, yeah, there's hardly any information at all. So... Well, there are, uh, besides hires, uh, patent applications, um, and I mean, there are quite a few of them. Then again, with Apple, a lot of stuff happens and it leads uh, the press to believe that something is happening and e either doesn't happen in the right year or, or sometimes not at all. You know, we're still waiting for that Apple television, right? Yeah. So what do the patent applications in this sense tell us? So the the main patent application that uh, that I was looking at was uh, one that was filed, I think, three years ago uh, for something that was referred to as iTime, which I, I feel like has to be misdirection because, you know, that sort of stuff is available to the public. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, it just sort of shows a, a pretty slim looking band. Uh, the thing with that uh, application specifically is it, it shows a, um, a watch face that sort of pops in and out, which is like... Uh, the Wim One, which is a smartwatch company that Google bought, but it's it's a lot. It's actually a lot more like uh, the the watch bands that people used to um, snap uh, iPod Nanos into. Mm -hmm. So I mean, who knows if the actual iWatch has anything to do with that patent? Apple patents stuff that they don't make all the, that they never end up making all the time. But uh, that's one of the best leads we have to go on. It's interesting that the fall uh, Apple sort of lineup has been iPhone in September, iPad in October, and sometimes they throw in a few things, but really that's the way that they've broken it out. They don't want to launch uh, or they don't want to announce uh, a new iPhone and an iPad at the same time because why not have two 
events、mm-hmm. and, and break it out. Why do you think the company, let's say we're getting、uh, at, at least a first look at the iWatch in a couple of weeks, why would they bundle it into the iPhone event and not its own? Um, I think, um, I mean, I think it probably has to be the fact that the iWatch is going to be an iPhone companion, right? Like,、mm-hmm. um, I think the ship has pretty much sailed on,、um, on watches that actually replace your phone. Maybe not sailed, but nobody's doing it, nobody's doing it right now. And I don't, I don't think that iWatch is going to、uh, broach that territory. So, yeah, I think it, it makes sense to have the, the, the two of them together because,、uh, Yeah, because the iWatch is basically going to be sort of an input and output extension for the iPhone that probably ties into the health app. But also, I mean, it just, Apple could get people to come to three events, but three events seems just like just a little bit overkill. In recent Apple events, speaking of events, there's been a lot of leaks、uh, to the point where sometimes you know, we sit through a two hour event and it's like, yep, they just announced everything that pretty much everybody already knew because of leaks and, and, and sources and that sort of thing. We really haven't seen any leaked images, really anything beyond concepts and rumors for an iWatch. Does that surprise you? Yeah, actually, it surprises me a fair amount. And now, so, I mean, I heard that this is the way that it used to be way back in the day. I'm going to admit how young I am. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> around when, you know, the early iPhones were coming out. So I, I don't know, <laughs> but I hear that it. Well, Define well, around. I wasn't l o g g i n g I was around. I was around.、Uh, right. But、um, <laughs> not that young. But,、uh, but yeah, I mean, so I hear that things used to be a lot tighter. But this is definitely the most,、uh, like, the. The least amount of leaks I've seen for an Apple、uh, release recently, like it just, I guess it was two years ago now when the iPad Air was coming out, like pretty much the biggest question was just what were they going to call it, right? Like、mm-hmm. everything else had leaked about it. So, yeah, it's really impressive. And like the only physical、uh, thing I think that I've heard really it was there's a Wall Street Journal leak. Or maybe it was Reuters that the iWatch would have a 2.5 inch screen, which is just totally baffling. Like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> That's pretty big. Who knows what this thing's going to look like? <laughs> well,、uh, you know, it, we'll probably find out in a couple of weeks. So I'll put you on the spot. What do you think? Are we getting、uh, a, a wearable、uh, announcement on September 9th at an Apple event? Yeah, I think so. I think, like, just imagine what it would be like if we didn't. I, I can't even. <laughs> I, I feel like. Just melt down. Kind of, yeah. yeah, I feel like there's, they kind of have no choice. If they can do it, I think they have to do it because otherwise it's just going to be, yeah. A huge letdown. Yeah. Yeah, a huge、right. one. Yeah, which wouldn't be the first time. Eric Leimer、yeah. is an associate editor over at Gizmodo. Thanks so much for being here and talking yeah, through some of、me. these rumors and conjecture and let people know where they can get a hold of you and read more of your work. So you can read my work at gizmodo.com and you can find me on Twitter at,、uh, at Eric Leimer. Thanks so much, Eric. Yeah, thanks. All right, finally, if you ever thought it would be cool, you know, to be like those kids on the show Friends who just, you know, sit around the coffee shop and don't have tablets, remember that show? It was really popular. According to Deadline, Fox has greenlit a TV sitcom called All Together Now, and it's going to feature a plot based on six friends in their late 20s. Who decide to unplug from their mobile devices and interact with one another, quote, for as long as they can stand it. The new sitcom hasn't actually begun production, so don't expect it in the fall lineup this year. But when it does air, I hope that you watch it via Hulu Plus on your Roku streaming stick. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at tn2 at twit.tv with feedback. Don't miss Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.